Now here we're going to look at the Vanishing Point tool. Now the Vanishing Point tool allows you to work and edit in sort of a perspective space by making a perspective grid and then working on that grid. So what I'm going to try to do here is I have these stars sort of from the Chicago flag and I'm going to apply them to the perspective of this building. And the workflow is a little interesting for this so bear with me. So you have to copy the objects that you want to be applied into the perspective and then create a new layer and sort of work from that layer. And to access the Vanishing Point tool, you go to Filter, Vanishing Point. Now it brings up this other dialog window here. And there's a couple tools that are noteworthy, which is your Create Plane tool. And that's basically how you create your perspective grid. So you create four corners of where you want your grid to go. and you define the area of where you want the grid to go. Now just because you created these four corners or these four points doesn't mean that the perspective is sort of aligned to your um, image. So if you see here that the lines in the building are not really going in the same direction as the grid lines. So that means the perspective is still off. Now when you're in this window it is a little limiting to how you can control the zoom. It doesn't work like the regular zoom. You have your plus and your minus your command plus and minus, your control plus and minus, and then you have your alt and space bar to zoom in and zoom out. But you can't use your mouse wheel and you have this little plus and minus down here. I'm not really sure why it works like that, but that's the way that it works. So you have to zoom out a little bit. You can control with your edit plane tool and you could align it and make it work. Once you're done with that, you go ahead and paste in the objects that you want to place. And they paste in flat, but what you need to do is click and drag it into the space of your perspective grid. And you'll see that it pops into the perspective grid. From there, you can shift it around. You can do Control T and use your transforms, and also use the transforms to adjust it you can rotate it and kind of shift it around to how you want it. And then before you hit OK, there's a couple things. You can flip and flop it. And then there's a drop down here that has render grids to Photoshop, which is going to take our grid here and actually create a layer with that grid on it. You can render your measurements or you could render that grid into a 3D layer in Photoshop. You can also export to DXF and a couple other things. But uh, these are the most noteworthy here. On the side, you basically have your regular selection, clone tool. You can also paint within this space. And there you see we have our perspective stars on the grid. Now if we jump back in here, we still have our grid. So it remembers our grid, which is good. We can also paint and it'll paint within the perspective and within the space of the grid. You can eye drop, you have your measurement tool, so on and so forth. So you're a little limited to what you could do in here. You have the brush tool, but you can't access any of your brushes. So it's pretty limiting there to what you could do. You can't even change your brush size. So again, it allows you to work at that space and in the perspective, but it it doesn't give you all the options that Photoshop has, so it's kind of limiting. So once you're done with this and you jump back out, you can edit it as normal in Photoshop or as expected. But that's pretty much a quick overview of the Vanishing Point tool. It's helpful in a lot of cases. It helps work in a 3D space and in a perspective space. Um, and there you have it.